Gordon Branson says, both the penguin and shark case studies present a critical perspective of these iconic endangered species and examines the question of whether conservation can successfully sustain protection of all life forms currently in rapid decline. How do we avoid moving towards a scenario where governments in the future may well make difficult decisions on extinction of species, however unpalatable this may be to the scientific and local community? Yes, I think he's asking whether conservation can be successful in sustaining protection for all life forms. Not on its own. I mean, I, I think is a, I see that as a complicated puzzle where everybody must do their part um, if we want to say something happening. So uh, we need scientists to get funded and, and do their job uh, correctly and constantly. We need the government to listen um, to the to the conclusion and look at um, paper and study publishing good peer review scientific journal because now in the scientific community we also have this new challenge of open source and so, some bad not all open source journals are bad but some open source journals are bad and predatory so you see some sort of publication coming out. But when you scratch the surface, you find out that maybe it's not statistically significant. The journal was not properly peer reviewed. And now we have this extra challenge. So we need government uh, official to be extremely clued up when it comes to utilizing the, the scientific resources. And mm -hmm. um, so, so we have this additional challenge. And then we need the member of the public to... Um, to come to you know situation like today where we get to speak directly and, and discuss the, the up to date information and and vote well and be aware and 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 pass on what they learn to other people so we don't have a mass of people just learning from Facebook. Yeah. You know there is a lot that can be done, <laughs> um, but it must must happen all together. Um, or it's not going to work. Just activists, conservationists, and scientists screaming and shouting that is is everything is, is going badly. It's, it's not. It's obviously not enough. No, exactly. Exactly. Um, in the chat, uh, oh, thank has... you, Rabia. No, I'm seeing that. <laughs> I'm fine. Um. You see that um, we discussed, um, we had an international year of tourism um, mm -hmm. in the past, uh, which was proclaimed by the UN, and um, the NSTF did a discussion forum at the time um, around tourism. And um, one of the conclusions was tourism's impact and reach is misunderstood. Um, and it really is a very important part of our um, economy. I mean, we took huge blows to the economy during the COVID period, among others because of the um, impossibility of tourism during that time. Absolutely. And so I think, you know, in the self, just for self-interest sake, the government really should take this extremely uh, seriously. And there is a big, a lot of talks around the blue economy in particular these days. You know, there was the U United Nations uh, Ocean Week that happened last year, where they found out that only 2% of the funding resources are spent towards marine uh, sustainability and uh, no, so the sustainable goal 14. Um, oh. Not enough attention is, uh, but, but it's changing. I believe it's changing now. Uh, Indeed. There is space for hope. There's space for hope. On that Positive note. <laughs> um, Sarah, thank you very much indeed for your interesting presentation and for being here and giving us um, other perspectives and and more of, of the evidence of what is being done actively. Um, thank you for saving the sharks with the shark <laughs> thank here <you>. as well. <laughs> thank you okay. very much for having me. <laughs>